Welcome to the final chapter in our series of Foundation Fireside presentations. This evening, we'd like to talk about two topics of great importance to Rotarians. First, we'll explore the Rotary Foundation Endowment Fund, which many refer to as the Foundation Savings Account. We'll end this evening's presentation with My Rotary, a place for members of Rotary to access tools and information to make your membership experience better. Now, why would we support the Endowment Fund? I'd like to play a short video titled The Rotary Foundation Endowment. You're a Leewood. You know what that means? We work hard and we give back. <laughs> you know, someday this apple tree will be bigger than I am. We're leaving the future behind today. You'll see. Giving to Rotary's endowment ensures life-changing programs will benefit generations to come. Your legacy is Rotary's promise. What exactly is the Endowment Fund? As president of the Rotary Club of Cleveland, Ohio, in 1913, Arch Klumpf advocated for the club to build a reserve that would ensure its means to do future good work. As the sixth president of Rotary in 1916-17, he proposed the idea to a larger audience. In his speech to the 1917 convention in Atlanta, he said, it seems imminently proper that we should accept endowments for the purpose of doing good in the world, in charitable, educational, or other avenues of community progress. Arch's vision of an endowment would eventually become the Rotary Foundation, and his call for doing good in the world was to become the Foundation's motto. The Rotary Foundation established an endowment in 1982, formerly called the Permanent Fund, now known as the Endowment Fund, to ensure a strong future for the foundation by providing a continuous stream of income to meet the increasing demand for foundation programs in perpetuity. The endowment fund is an investment portfolio with the initial capital derived from donations or gifts from individuals and couples worldwide. The investment capital is never spent. Contributions are invested in perpetuity. Only the earnings are used to support foundation programs. There are many ways to contribute. Contributions to the endowment fund can be outright gifts of cash, investments, or other property, such as real estate, etc. Life income gifts, for example, charitable remainder trust. Now, the, the CRTs are more of a U.S. thing, but they, there are some advantages in Canada. Uh, charitable gift annuities, pooled income funds, etc. I will also note that these type of gifts often will avoid capital gains tax and can have significant tax advantages. Testamentary gifts through wills or estate plans. Now, many of the members in our club give to the endowment fund in this way. They just include in their will a gift of X number of dollars or a certain percentage of their will to the endowment fund. Some people have even started with a fixed amount and then changed to a percentage as they may not know the final size of their estate and wanna make sure that their kids are guaranteed a certain percentage. Beneficiary of life insurance, retirement plan accounts, or other financial accounts, having the Rotary Foundation as a beneficiary of a life insurance policy is a gift we fairly commonly see as well, and outright memorial gifts. So you ask, what value is the endowment fund? The purpose of the endowment fund is to ensure the long-term viability of the Rotary Foundation and its programs. Contributions made to the endowment fund are invested in perpetuity with no erosion of the contribution itself. Many might view the endowment fund as the foundation savings account, whose interest supports the annual fund or foundation's checking account. Unlike the annual fund, whose money is distributed after four years after contribution, the endowment fund's principal is never spent and is structured to maintain value against inflation. The endowment fund most certainly can assure the Rotary Foundation's long-term viability 
but it also serves to assure program funding when annual fund investment returns are impacted by economic downturns. Truly a gift that keeps on giving. Spendable earnings are available to expand existing activities and to underwrite new ones. As the endowment fund shortly realizes its $1 billion goal, its investment income may approach over 33% of annual fund giving, empowering the Rotary Foundation to plan even larger projects and purpose in its programs. The endowment fund truly will be the future lifeblood of the Rotary Foundation. Let's look at what our endowments support. These are the six areas of focus. In addition, gifts may also be made to the endowment fund share. Gifts to endowment fund share will support global and local projects and provide DDF to the donor's designated district. And for the recipient and donor, all of these things can be achieved through gifts to both the annual fund and endowment. Outright gifts or planned estate gifts of 25,000 or more entitle the donor to a named endowed fund. You can see by this example what the earnings on a gift of this size would produce. This is an example using a real named endowed fund created in 1994. The fund was established with a gift of $25,000. Despite some ups and downs in the market during this time, the fund has grown to $45,992 and has also generated over 46,000 in spendable earnings that have been used to support the humanitarian work of the foundation. So 13 years ago, there was seven and a half million of spendable earnings available from the endowment. Two years ago, the amount increased to 15 and a half million, more than double what it was a decade earlier. The goal is for the endowment to have $1 billion in net assets by 2025, which will pro provide approximately 50 million in spendable earnings each year. Imagine the good that will be done by Rotarians of the future using these financial resources to meet the needs of the future. Your Rotary legacy, every Rotarian can make an impact now and forever. Outright contributions to the endowment count towards major donor and Arch Clump Society recognition, including a commitment to the Rotary Foundation in a will or estate plan ensures that that donor's charitable goals will be fulfilled for many years to come. Committing a fixed amount or percentage of assets in an estate plan shares the donor's resources after they no longer need them. This notification card is all you need to advise Rotary of your commitment and receive the appropriate recognition. The benefactor designation is given when you include the endowment fund as a beneficiary of $1,000 or more in your estate plans, or when you donate $1,000 or more to the fund outright. Benefactors receive a certificate and insignia to wear with a Rotary or Paul Harris Fellow pin. The trustees are pleased to confer membership to the Bequest Society on these donors, and their spouse partner for commitments of 10,000 US or more, the members of this elite group of dedicated humanitarians will receive special foundation updates, invitations to events, an engraved crystal, and an exclusive pin or pennant. When they invest in the foundation's future, donors retain their Bequest Society membership regardless of fluctuations in their financial portfolio or other assets. Whether a Rotarian makes an outright gift or a commitment to the Rotary Foundation endowment in their long-term estate or financial plans, they are continuing a hundred year tradition of uniting leaders from all continents, cultures, and industries for the common good. And named after the sixth president of Rotary, the Arch Clump Society recognizes Rotary Foundation's highest tier of donors. Those who have contributed $250,000 or more during their lifetime. Membership in the Arch Clump Society is lifelong. Each member, has the opportunity to have his or her portrait placed in the Arch Clump Society Gallery, located on the 17th floor of Rotary International World Headquarters in Evanston, Illinois. Portraits are etched in glass plaques to create a stunning display of our foundation's most valued supporters. Members will also have their profiles included in an interactive display, plus receive pins, pennants, and several other benefits commensurate with their generosity. Our club has several generous members who have been recognized as benefactors and Bequest Society members. Bequest Society members are automatically benefactors as well. Thank you all for your generous gifts.
100 years of Rotarian dedication made the Rotary Foundation's success possible. What you do today will shape the next century of service. Now we're gonna move on to um, the second part of this evening's presentation. Uh, welcome to My Rotary, a place for members of Rotary to access tools and information to make your membership experience better. So there's a ton of information on rotary.org and great opportunities to network with Rotarians from around the world when signed in to your My Rotary account. For the sake of time tonight, we're only gonna make sure that you have the information to get yourself signed in to your personal account and then just scratch the surface of what's available on the site. If we were meeting in person, I'd demonstrate this on live online, but I thought it might be a bad idea to try this on Zoom, considering my lack of tech savvy. The first thing we have is in, to create an account. First, you go to rotary.org and then you select register. Then you need to complete the fields below right in here. And it takes your first and last name and your email and you have to certify that you're 18 years of age and all that stuff. And then click continue. And you will receive an email with a link to activate your account. And then after you activate your account, this screen will appear. You complete those fields below. You must create a password of at least eight characters and must contain at least one lowercase letter, one number, and it may not include any part of your email. Then confirm your password. Choose a security question from the list and provide the answer, then click continue. To sign in, enter your email address, which is the same as your username down here, and your, user, and your newly created password, and then hit select or sign in. So if your email address matches Rotary's records, then no further steps are needed. If it doesn't, then we've got to jump over to step three. If your email address doesn't match one in Rotary's records, you'll be asked for your member status. And you'll put, you'll choose right in here for your member status. You'll then be asked to enter a previous email that may be associated with Rotary. If you don't have access to that email address, then Rotary will cr uh, create a new account for you. Let's head over to rotary.org or myrotary.org, either one to sign in. Note the sign in area is noted by the red arrow. So if you scroll, you can scroll down here too. It's all on the same page and sign in right here. And it's a little more obvious sign in area. Now note that I'm also signed in and my name is showing at the top of the page as indicated by the arrow. Click on the drop down menu to check out your options. My profile, my donations, my account actions, account settings, and sign out. Under my profile, you'll find that all your con you'll find all your contact info, your rotary resume, where you'll see if you've been a committee chair, the years you've obtained EREY, sustaining membership, as well as other rotary clubs you may have held membership in, etc. If you need to change your address, phone number, email, this would be the place to go. Also, you've got control over your privacy settings and who can see this information. So let's click on my donations and look at this window. Okay, this area is called donor self services where you can change recurring donations you have set up, update credit card information, etc. Note where the arrow is pointing on donor history report. Click here and it will bring up your personal account available for your eyes only. Now I pulled up my account and I've redacted all the numbers but in addition to this summary report, you also receive a report of every donation or transaction you've done with the foundation since day one in your rotary time. Let's take a look at account actions and see what's in there. In here, you'll see a number of options with different work groups, recommendations, discussion groups, messages, et cetera. The last two options on the drop down menu are account settings where you can change some of your security options, communication methods, and service options offered. And below, this is where you sign out of your account. Now we're back to the home page, hovering our mouse over the Rotary Foundation title, shown by the top arrow, which brings up another menu pointed to by the arrow on the left, giving you more information on the foundation topics. Under the second item on the list, Give, this is one place you can make a donation, but I'm gonna show you another. Also under Foundation Reports, you can find your personal private donor history in this area as well. 
So there are multiple ways to do things on this site and it's jam packed with information. Let's select donate, which is to the right on the home page. And a window comes up showing you four different funds you can choose to donate to. The annual fund, polio plus, world fund, or disaster response fund. Remember, if you choose the annual fund, half of the money comes back to the district in three years to help our club obtain district and world grants for local and international projects. You will also see three other tabs where you can donate to any one of the six areas of focus directly, three more options for a cash contribution to the endowment fund, and also a specified numbered grant if you choose. So thank you very much. That ends our presentation and we'd be happy to try to answer your questions.